When I was a kid, I used to listen to Johnny Cash sing a boy named Sue on this mixtape that my grandpa made. And it was the early 70s, and he was the only old man in Winnipeg who had a hi-fi stereo. Yeah. And uh, he'd drink beer, and he'd give me a little beer, and I'd drink it in the orange juice with him when we played the orange juice with Johnny. I listened to <laughs> and, uh, a bird that told me all. He seemed to make no sense as I recall. Crashes dummies are like fake people. <laughs> They're literally fake people. And I, I liked that already. And I also liked the fact that Crash Test Dummies sort of suggested an experiment, and that's kind of what we we were. It was all purely for fun. Then I got into making records, and it became much more of a job. It became much more corporate. And then when I found out I couldn't make a living at it, I went back to just making music for fun. I think that if you sit around trying to think of what you ought to write, you're probably going to fail miserably. Yeah. Start grabs it on the iPhone with the little recorder. Then I email it to him. He wakes up at four in the morning, writes the words, and we're done. <laughs> and there it is. I'm not even sure how I got the idea to make a toys record. I had worked once before with someone who had an Optagon, which is one of the most elaborate, um, old school, strange toy instruments you could lay your hands on. On every disc, there's a kind of an atmosphere of an old 78 gramophone to it. And it sounded like something out of the past. That really took me to new places. I could clearly see that Stuart saw the potential in this novel approach and was excited, as excited about it as I was. You can't mess with any of the music in here, so we then had to use, decide what of this we were going to use and what we weren't and then replay all that stuff on instruments that we're familiar with <laughs> and that, then it got very serious, for me anyway. I'd like to be able to walk up to the guy who played in some of these bands and say, man, I love your work. I know, <laughs> and and you've helped me so much. So what you'll hear is just what I, what I just... That's the same as what I just played on the keyboard. And more and more instruments come in as we listen. You said you'd meet me in California. I just had this feeling of unrequited love. And so I ended up writing the song, You Said You'd Meet Me in California. You said we'd stay here and make a family. Well, out on the ocean, the mermaids are singing. Sometimes I'll come in with a lyric and improvise a melody as I go. Other times, Stuart will compose a set of chords on a toy and I will work up a melody line and then fit the lyrics in to the melody line. You're on the East Coast, I'm gonna kick your ass, I'll cut you. Every time I came to Stuart's studio, whether I had a lyric or not, I walked out at the end of the day with a complete song. And we just had absolute license to do anything we wanted. There was no deadline, we didn't even think about a release date. So it was just pure doing this for the sake of doing it. And to make a record under those circumstances is almost unheard of. This is how we write songs, actually. <laughs> I already be, have a melody. This will, be, <laughs> this will be on our next record. All these discs have styles of music that both of us would never sit down and think of. No. Hey, man, let's write a bossa nova today. It's not... Yeah. <laughs> exactly, and, or, we a, did. or we, a big band. <laughs> and we thank the machines. We thank you so much for <laughs> inspiring that and taking us in directions that um, I know I would... Never a fan. Yeah. Oh, I'm no more gonna put day gonna put in a mom. Oh, I'm no more gonna put day gonna put in a mom. Once there was this kid who got into an accident and got him come to school, but when I have gone out of my way to not write love songs because they're just too easy and they're too cheesy and I made an exception at this point in my life. Um, with, the, with this track called Beautiful. My backup singer 
Ellen was shocked when she saw the lyrics. She said, you, what happened to Brad? Is he on ecstasy or something? Like, he's never written a happy song in his life. That's what gives me pleasure, is to make a different record every time. It, it frustrates record companies and fans, but we, I've been fortunate to have some open-minded people. We turn our water into wine. Something we do all the time It doesn't cost a single dime And it beautiful Enough about the look in your eyes Enough about the sun and the sky Just you and I And it's beautiful Yes, it's beautiful It's a good song in and of itself, but it's also in large part to do with Stuart Lerman's contribution in terms of arrangements. We ended up having Rob Morseberger come in and do string arrangements and Stuart Smith, who plays every instrument. He came in and played beautifully on just about every track. Ellen Reed was there from the very, very beginning. She'll be singing backups and lead on a couple of songs on this uh, tour I'm gonna be doing for this record. I like that kind of it. that bit. Dun da 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 dun da 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 dun da 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 la 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 da 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 da